Is everybody able to see? Good. Right. Okay. As I said, we've done a number of different trips, and uh, over the time, not all of the trips I'm going to talk about were organised by me, but I've selected them because they highlighted different uh, aspects of it. And it goes almost without saying that you need good weather, but that really is, uh, in most cases, down to luck, although we have chosen a couple of locations where we felt that we would be, yeah, have a better chance than most uh, uh, from a weather point of view. Accommodation is obvious, um, I mean, but trying to find accommodation for 20 people uh, you know, can be quite a struggle. Uh, and again, that, um, you know, different choices of places is to stay. Uh, I'm going to cover that off. With a group of 20 people, you're not all going to be interested in doing the same things. And, and, and that's one of the key things is to have a place where there are things to do. And, you know, you might be looking with the weather and have uh, good weather all through the week, or you may have a couple of days where it's not so good. Uh, so you need to be able to um, have things nearby, uh, either within walking distance or if, you, uh, if you've got enough cars to, uh, for people to go to and do. We are not professional cyclists. So <laughs> uh, some people uh, don't mind hills, but I don't think anybody in the group really enjoys them. So we you know, try to make it... Uh, capable for, for, for everyone to be able to do. Okay. It has to be relatively easy to get to, although there are different ways uh, of, of, of coping with that. In some cases we've used bike hire, uh, other cases we've taken uh, our own cycles along. And yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, most of the people uh, that are on these trips only see each other's maybe once or twice um, a week. Some people may only see once or twice a month, and some we only see on these trips. Uh, they um, either don't live in Leicester or have, you know, uh, only come back to Leicester on infrequent occasions. So, you know, you can't please all of the people all the time, um, and it's just about trying to, um, yeah, get along most of the time. So where we've been? Well, you know, taking into account the what I said earlier about weather and 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 things, um, you know, the, the most northerly location there might surprise a few, but I am covering that in the presentation. Um, the ones I've highlighted in bold uh, and, and stars are the ones that I'm going to talk about. But other ones, um, yeah, uh, you know, we've covered off uh, you know, a trip to the world. You think, well, what's new on the world? Well. It, it actually was a really enjoyable trip because you can get across uh, into Liverpool. So we had a, a good uh, time out in Liverpool, but also there are, um, there's a good cycle um, route around uh, the outside of the world as well. Uh, Jersey San Malo, a group of us went down there um, and uh, some on that group continued their trip uh, onwards and upwards up the Cherbourg Peninsula uh, and then back across on the ferry. Orkney, I'll talk about Holland. Bristol was interesting, you know, just a group of us went down in, a, uh, in cars, etc., and then uh, various accommodation. And interesting thing about Bristol is you're at sea level, so everywhere going out of Bristol is uphill for a start off. Mallorca I'll talk about, and last year we were down in, um, in France, between uh, about an hour inland between Nantes and um, La Rochelle, uh, which uh, was an excellent holiday too. So, Holland. Well, I mean, we were up in the north of Holland there, but uh, the easiest way to get to Holland, uh, especially if you've got groups, a uh, large group of people, is to take the ferry over. Take the ferry over from Harwich to the Hook of Holland. Um, it's an overnight ferry, or we chose to take an overnight ferry. Uh, I use the term overnight somewhat loosely because you're woken up by something like five o'clock in the morning by a loud klaxon as you uh, come into the Hook of Holland. And you've got like... Uh, what, what appears to be a very short time to get dressed and, and down and into your cars and so sort on. Of bleary eyed, we emerged out into the Hook of Holland and um, you know, drove up to our, our base near Alkmaar, stopping off for breakfast on the way. And by the time we got there, unloaded the bikes and we were out on the bikes in the afternoon. Um, Holland has obviously uh, some significant advantages from a cycling point of view. It is absolutely the best place uh, to cycle uh, in terms of provision and in terms of awareness of other road users. Although, to be honest, you are not often on the road. 
the cycle, uh, cycle facilities are excellent. Um, English is obviously widely spoken. Uh, I know it's a typical arrogant English point of view, but uh, it does make life uh, very easy. Uh, and I'd say mostly flat. Uh, Holland has this perception of being um, flat as a pancake, and indeed most of it is, or a large part of it, is below sea level. Um, but as we discovered when we got to Alkmaar, um, there's a little bit more to it. Um, the place we actually stayed at was Bergen Arm Z, uh, and every time I say that, my Dutch friends, they burst out laughing uh, because clearly I cannot pronounce it like a, a Dutch person. But it is a, it, oh, it turned out to be a great location. Uh, you can see Amsterdam down in the bottom right there. That distance between where we stayed with the red dot to Amsterdam is only 30 miles. So that gives you an idea of the scale. You know, we could reach pretty much everywhere on that uh, peninsula there. Uh, it turned out also uh, accidentally to be festival time uh, between Bergen and Zee and the you know, it's, uh, it's sort of land equivalent of Bergen. Uh, Bergen it's, is a, like an artist colony type place. Uh, with So the festival was split between the two with um, sailing going on at Bergen Arnsey, which we didn't see much of, but uh, there was stuff going on in the main town. There's a variety of rides and scenery, and I mentioned sand dunes. They are not like the ones at Skegness, um, and I'll show you some pictures uh, later. But you've got the beaches and typical Dutch fields, and the picture at the bottom uh, there of the house, that was the house we stayed in. There weren't, there weren't 20 of us on this one. There were probably, I think, 10 of us that went. But this was, this was a great accommodation. It was basically split up into little uh, flats each one having a little kitchenette and a fridge so you could have your breakfast, etc. But there was a, a, a large common uh, kitchen and uh, dining area uh, uh, where we yeah, uh, spent the rest of our time. So that worked really well. So what we got in, uh, what do we see in Bergen? Well, uh, going around, I mean, the, um, the picture on the top left is Alkmaar, so it's a typical sort of uh, Dutch architecture there. The picture with the boat doing the turn, or well, we went, if I go back to the previous slide, we, you see at the top there, Den Helder, and there's an island, Tessel. Um, we went up one day, um, took cars up, uh, and caught the ferry over, leaving our cars in Den Helder. Uh, there wasn't enough cars, and we didn't want to take the trailer because our you know, security, etc., leaving it in Den Helder. So some people, um, hired bikes when we got on to uh, Tessel. But the boat going over um, was subject to a mock assault by the Dutch Marines. They were practicing their boarding and um, you know, approach technique. So we were, we were treated to a little display of their skills there. Uh, the next picture is what I refer to as, <laughs> when I was referring to the sand dunes, those are the sand dunes. Uh, and uh, the unexpected arrival there was the Highland cattle. Uh, as we were cycling through these um, somewhat mountainous um, sand dunes, uh, there were these pools, small small lakes, uh, and um, yeah, there were the Highland cattle grazing the grass. Of course, any any you know presentation on Holland uh, wouldn't be complete without uh, windmills, um, and there's a nice picture of, of the spokes uh, pokes up by the uh, windmill on the right. The place with all the windmills is actually not. Um, <laughs> it's it's like a um, windmills of Holland um, uh, Park so um, just um, highlighting the different types of windmills etc so it's it's not it's it's somewhat artificial uh, as a as a place you wouldn't normally see that many windmills in in one view um, move over. oh sorry I, I think behind, behind my view of where the people are yes some of us uh, on that on Tessel uh, hired tandems um, some people are very used to using tandems, some people are not. Uh, my wife Leslie and I tried it for about two minutes and uh, <laughs> decided it was not for us. <laughs> I wondered what was going on. I was at the front, Leslie was at the back. And I was trying to you know, put some pressure on the pedals and but couldn't, couldn't get any um, wet down. And oh, Leslie said, I'm just, I'm just standing up and trying to adjust my seating. I said, you can't do that on a tandem. <laughs> Whatever you do, you've got to... Tell me in advance what you're going to do, and then we'll do it, uh, you know, together rather than um, yeah, independent action. You can't have independent action on a on a tandem. <laughs> and 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 uh, there are in in, in spokes there are uh, some couples who are very used to being on tandems, uh, and it's a joy to watch them. But they they haven't done it overnight. They've they've taken time to get to that point. 
I just uh, I can't see if there are any questions or comments coming through whilst I'm doing the presentation. So Trish, if there's anything you want to um, uh, interrupt me with or whatever, uh, let me know. Our next trip, uh, as I said, was uh, somewhat you know, odd in terms of weather, but um, we went up to Orkney. Uh, and this was uh, a trip organized by uh, Qumran. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a place I've never been to. I've been up, uh, I've been further north uh, onto Shetland uh, several times, but flew directly there. I haven't done any cycling up there. Um, Orkney turned out to be quite a surprise. First of all, it's a, one of the flattest of the um, Scottish uh, islands. So from a cycling point of view, uh, was appropriate. Getting there was a bit tricky um, because there are no direct flights from any of the nearby airports. Um, but we managed, um, those of us that flew up, fairly good connections from Birmingham uh, via Edinburgh on the way out and uh, Aberdeen on the way back. Worked pretty, pretty easily. We just took up our luggage as, um, as pannier bags uh, and then high bikes when we were there uh, and put pannier straight on them. Uh, there was a group of people who chose to drive up and it's around 620 miles. So um, yeah, I think at least one overnight stay uh, was needed, but uh, yeah, that's quite a long drive. And one of the reasons uh, we chose to fly was just to put down on, on the travel time there. But uh, of course it did mean that those people who took those people who took their own um, bikes were able to use their own bikes. All right, Peter, are you trying to say something? I could hear somebody's voice there. Um, Orkney has, yeah, quite a variety. Um, we stayed in these cottages, which looked fairly nondescript from the outside, but were warm and comfortable uh, on the inside. There were three of them um, in this, in the picture here. And then uh, a fourth one was on the other side of the road, maybe just half a mile away. Uh, so these these uh, these three here shared a common driveway and and and, and bike shed etc. Were able to uh, all fit together in there. Um, the picture at the top of the old man of Hoy. Yes, we did get over to see that, uh, and I'll go on to that. Yes, you can see Hoy was just a ferry ride away from uh, where we were based in Stromness. Um, so that was quite a pleasant day out. We were able to cycle right up to the old man of Hoy involved leaving the bikes but and, and then um, maybe a half an hour walk very scenic very scenic and as you can see you know from that picture there uh, that the, um, the weather that day was was superb the bottom right picture is of it is the view from the cottage you know straight over to um, the lock uh, there and those people who were in the other cottage at the other side of the road uh, were easily able to walk down to the rocky coastline there and um, and seals were were definitely seen. Uh, down there and as you can see here yeah again uh, spectacular scenery um, Orkney is really known for three things um, the old man of Hoy which uh, obviously we went to see Neanderthal it is uh, there's been a series on TV I think relatively recently uh, looking at some of the archaeology up there um, 4,000 years ago uh, and you know everywhere you go is uh, it's, it's either standing stones or burial mounds or in this case is, is actually a Neanderthal village uh, right next to the uh, sea there and then we also spent a day out in in Kirkwall and that's where the castle is we found inevitably a brewery uh, uh, and uh, you can see a number of us enjoying uh, tasting uh, trays there at uh, one of the Orkney breweries there was some food as well but um, yeah obviously it's a brewery uh, else on don't think uh, I have. Any oh, sorry, I said three things. So the old man of Hoy, Neanderthal, and the um, Scapa Flow, um, where which was the British naval base during World War World War One and Two, obviously uh, relevant today, um, but also where the German fleet was scuppered at the end of World War One, uh, and has now become uh, quite a diving attraction. And two of our our uh, group. Uh, did actually go diving on 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 the fleet, um, so yeah. Holland, so good we did it twice. Uh, this time we went right down to the south, the part of Holland I didn't know really existed. I assumed it was part of Belgium. Um, it is, um, you know, it is closer to uh, Bruges and Ghent than it is to any uh, well-known Dutch uh, place. 
um, and a sort of a little um, enclave uh, there on the, on the coast. Different travel to get there. Uh, we didn't use the ferry to Hook Up, Hook up Holland. This time we um, we used the Dover to Dunkirk, which is a much shorter crossing, um, you know, an hour or two at, at the most. Uh, so basically, if you're going to stay overnight, you stay overnight on the way down uh, and then um, jump on the ferry and you're over. And, you know, we were uh, at the um, accommodation really quickly uh, on the next day. Only 20 miles from Bruges, 30 miles from Ghent and four miles from a nice beach. So in terms of things to do, uh, you know, if the weather was good uh, or not so good, Bruges is, and Ghent are still nice places to go around. And we weren't in a town, but it was an, it was easy walking of about half a mile into the nearest town with uh, supermarkets, uh, shops, and, and and bars. The accommodation, um, I mean, I think it had been pur it had definitely been purpose built. Um, there were about uh, twenty of us on this, and this was basically four self-contained apartments split around a central common area. So, and you find you know quite large accommodation. It's not difficult to find in Holland and Belgium, to be honest. Uh, quite often used by um, large family groups, um, just basically, uh, you know, basing themselves uh, in one place, uh, in one large house, usually converted barns or whatever. Um, but also, this was usable as a sort of company, um, um, you know, uh, the company could hire it and use the central place for presentations, etc. So. Yeah, the, the four self-contained, as I say, the, the only time we cooked as a group was we, we had a big barbecue um, uh, because each of the four apartments had their own barbecues, so that was easy enough. We, uh, we didn't have any problem with that. We just moved all, well, I think I was cooking. I think others moved these tables outside and we um, they were quite hefty uh, and we cooked like that. And again, uh, I've mentioned the cycle trailer on the first trip to Holland. There it is. Uh, Mike, Mike Gamble has this trailer, which he's adapted, and we can put around 14 bikes on it. And with the other cars that went along, uh, we, we took our car and, and a couple of bikes, two or three bikes on that. Um, we, we had all the bikes there. And there's the beach. And as you can see, you know, it, you know, although it's a little drafty, there were plenty of people on that beach. Um, and uh, yeah, the picture on the bottom left is the, I think that was actually the ride that we took to Bruges uh, following one of the major canals. Um, and, and the picture on the bottom right is Bruges. Um, I think uh, many people will have been to Bruges. What, what a fantastic place, but to have it just on our doorstep uh, was also great. I spent a day there. Mallorca, um, this, was, this was a very different holiday. Was, um, we all flew there. Um, so, you know, uh, it wasn't possible and, and, and taking bikes on planes, um, you know, it depends how, how much you like your bike and how much the airlines like your bike as well. But um, uh, the um, one person did uh, take their bike. Uh, they, they went there um, a week or two earlier and did uh, some general cycling around Mallorca and then met up with us, uh, stayed the week with us and then cycled a bit more afterwards. Uh, but the rest of us flew there um, and, and then hired bikes when we were there. Uh, it was the time we st spent uh, there was in April rather than September. And this was, um, it's really off holiday season, but it is cycling season. Um, so, you know, hiring bikes was not an issue. Uh, and in fact, to be honest, although it wasn't the main holiday season, that didn't impact us too much other than the fact it wasn't very busy. And it meant that the prices in the hotel uh, were, were were reasonable, um, and, and this was a very um, a, a practical holiday from that point of view, um, because we were out of season. Um, that, that there was there was good choice uh, of where to stay. We stayed right over on the right hand side, um, a place called Cala Rajada, uh, which is basically an hour or so from Parma. And Rianne, who arranged this, uh, arranged a, a coach pickup uh, from the airport uh, to take us direct to, uh, to our hotel. We did arrive a little bit late on the flight. And then the bus that we were supposed to be going on had some problems with shutting the door, which, you know, led to you know, people being a long day of traveling. And then when we get to the hotel, uh, the hotel knew we were going to be late uh, and arranged some food, but we were you know, really tired. And it was just basically, 
it was uh, from what I remember it was all cold meats and some hard boiled eggs and some uh, some bread uh, so I think basically beef, people uh, ate that freshened up and then went out on the town <laughs> and saw at least some liquid uh, supplement to uh, to what was there the next morning um, yeah all that was uh, forgotten and we woke up to this uh, fantastic hotel uh, I think there were two outdoor pools there was an indoor pool spa um, beach in a rocky cove 500 yards away it had a secure bike store so we could get all our bikes that we were hired uh, there um, I think we were the only English people there. We were, um, were not. Uh, we were in an area of the island. I would say was predominantly um, German tourists on holiday. Um, it wasn't a problem. Uh, you know, I think English was was widely spoken for uh, for those uh, people that were there. Uh, the only problem that did occur was was, was with me, <laughs> because um, nowhere in the information supplied before the holiday and not, not not at the hotel was it said that for evening meal shorts were not acceptable <laughs> and i you know we we're on holiday it was april it was sunny i, I didn't have anything but shorts you know, cycling shorts or you know beach shorts there, were, there was no in between um and uh, you know the first couple of days there wasn't a problem but uh, uh, we did eventually get caught by uh, the maitre d uh, and um, obviously I, uh, quite a um, a lively discussion because it turned out that actually this rule was somewhat you know, uh, open to interpretation because when it got quite hot um, they allowed shorts but you know, I could make some comments about Germans following rules and all this sort of stuff but um, I did offer to go back to the room and wear one of my wife's skirts because that uh, that clearly wasn't shorts uh, and it was formal dress but uh, that, that discussion didn't get anywhere anyway I got away with it um, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, but it did provide a bit of light um, amusement for, for others more than me. Um, so Mallorca, um, again, plenty to do. Um, yeah, we've got the beaches. Uh, although you know, one of the you know, downsides of staying at a coastal resort is you you can only really go in. in, in, in you, you've knocked out fifty percent of of your routes. You're only going to be able to go um, uh, inland from there. Uh, there was plenty to do. Um, we, you know, we uh, the local town at Cap de Pera, uh, there's another one at Alta, had markets. There was uh, an old railway line that had been converted into a cycle track that gave us uh, good access to some of that. Uh, and there was also um, a, a route down to the south that uh, took us on to uh, some beaches. I mentioned the higher bikes. Three, there weren't enough hybrid bikes for all of us. Uh, so three of us had uh, mountain bikes, which wasn't a problem. Um, you know, uh, we weren't cycling vast distances. Um, and, 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 and one day towards the end, the three of us actually decided that we would actually use these mountain bikes as mountain bikes. So we had a um, quite a, a, a challenging route out, uh, especially if you're not used to mountain biking. Uh, uh, several of us uh, tried to fly a couple of times at least. Um, um, and we ended up with quite a long, uh, strenuous climb on a road. It wasn't a problem, but we were in the open sun. There was no shade, uh, and that was that was quite a choose. So, hence the three beers in the centre were, were our uh, very welcome um, reward or compensation for climbing up that. As you can see, there's you know some really nice scenery and, and, and old castles, etc. That was um, really. Uh, a very, very uh, enjoyable holiday there. Um, let's move on. So, some, oh, I've on too long. Summary. So, planning a, a trip for a large group, what do you need to do? Well, as they say, location, location, location. You really do need to um, think about having uh, plenty to do. Um, you know, going to going to Mallorca in April, that was a deliberate attempt uh, at, um, you know, trying to ensure decent weather, and we had fantastic weather whilst we were there. And the same with France. Um, and in fact, the weather got better and better in France as we uh, went along, uh, and a few of us stayed uh, on for an extra couple of days in France. And, and, and I think if we'd gone the following week, we probably would have been too warm uh, for us to be cycling quite as much as we did. Uh, it really was uh, for September in France. It was, it was excellent weather. 
you need to know what there is to see uh, and, and and places to go and visit. Um, you know, planning these um, is 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 not easy. Uh, so you know, we, we we get guidebooks, you get um, uh, websites, uh, maps, etc. Uh, but until you actually get there on the ground and find out. So the end. I see we've not got much time left. Um, I'll I'll shut that down. Um, in terms of the presentation, we basically come to the end of, of that. You know, it's you know, weather isn't guaranteed. We did have some um, uh, slightly wet and windy days in Orkney, but actually, the week we, that we were there was the best week that Orkney had that summer. Uh, they had an absolutely lousy summer. So, I, I, I picked up some of the stuff off the off the chats. I don't know, uh, Peter, if there's anything more you want to um, add from the chats or how we. I normally would um, spend a reasonable amount of time traveling uh, around on, on business trips, mostly in Europe, uh, occasionally further afield. Um, it's nowhere near what I used to do when I was properly employed. Uh, now as a uh, self-employed consultant, most of my work tends to be uh, closer to home. But you know, I get a reasonable amount of travel out of it. And if it's in the UK, uh, I will, if I'm going by my own car, I'll typically throw a bike in the back. Uh, and hope to um, get you know, a chance to explore the local area if I'm staying overnight and stuff like that. But going abroad, I yeah, decided that now that I'm in control of my own diary a lot more than I was when I was properly employed, um, I ought to start enjoying a little bit more the places that I'm visiting. I mean, in the past, yeah, I had what sounded like a fairly exotic travel itinerary, um, but to be honest, you see the airport, you see the hotel, you see the factory that you're visiting. Uh, and you rarely uh, get much more of a, a, an insight into what's going on. Um, but now um, I, I, I do try to, if possible, add an extra day or so. Uh, and also on, on at least one trip, uh, several more, uh, I've been able to take my, my wife along as well and she's been very happy to go off and uh, do some sightseeing while I'm doing my factory stuff, and then we'll join and do some stuff together. And then from a from a financial point of view, it makes a lot of sense because the, my flight and you know if I take Leslie along with me, uh, and I, I tend to take taxis to the airport because quite often I'm, I may arrive back at a different airport using Ryanair and so forth. Um, so the transfers to and from the airport are paid for anyway uh, at both sides. Most places you go to have bike car and provide helmet and locks. And I say most places, I, I do, or normally I would visit Saudi Arabia a uh, reasonable number of times a year. And that, that is a place, even if there was bike car, I really wouldn't want to cycle in, in, in Riyadh. Um, it's, it's really uh, not a city to walk around, never mind to cycle around. Um, I mean, they are building a rapid transit system but it is a, a, a very much a car city. Uh, and then of course you've got the climate, um, very obviously hot and dry, you're in the middle of the desert in, in Riyadh. And then there's the uh, you know, inevitable religious aspect to it. Uh, and uh, people I know in Saudi who do go cycling tend to do it at like five o'clock in the morning, partly because it's cooler, but also because the religious police aren't up and about because wearing of shorts and showing of skin uh, is not acceptable. In terms of travel uh, and, and, and um, getting an extra day's cycling in, it's easy enough to take cycling. It's light, it's foldable. You just throw a pair of trainers in, you'd probably take them anyway uh, to wear when you, if you're walking around. I normally take a small rucksack because you can't be guaranteed um, a, 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 um, a rack or a, you know, a basket or something, so you need something to carry stuff around with. I take my uh, cycling glasses because uh, mine are bifocals um, and I, that means I can uh, read my uh, sat nav or, or, or any maps or whatever that uh, I have with me and a bungee cord just in case there is a rack then I can put the rucksack on the um, on, on the rack everything else really you can buy or, or hire you know the bikes tend to come with locks uh, and I say helmets and um, if you need sun cream water etc you get that um, part of what I'm going to be talking about is um, mapping uh, and, and using um, uh, software. Um, I use Commute, but uh, others are available. Um, 
and it isn't just about hiring banks uh, and sometimes it I have taken a guided cycle tour um, and that's particularly if I'm obviously visiting a city rather than getting out of the city and going into the countryside it's good to get uh, local knowledge uh, and uh, see all the sites and there's some real characters that do that as well <clears throat> so excuse me so adding a day or so to a business trip I've done that in you know Gozo which I uh, just know from Malta Copenhagen which was a guided tour I've been to Copenhagen probably 30 or 40 times um, that guided tour was last year it went to places I did not know about in Copenhagen it was really interesting and well worth doing Stockholm uh, Oslo Cadiz I'm going to talk about I did, uh, I, I hired a bike in Zurich uh, I didn't go climbing mountains on that I just went around uh, what is quite a large lake uh, next to Zurich um, in fact I didn't make it all the way around I had to turn around um, was the distance uh, obviously in Holland um, I hired uh, the typical Dutch uh, three-speed bike go see uh, although um, th those uh, sand dunes are, are in the north of Holland they are the exception normally the steepest hill you get is a is a speed bump um, I've also, um, so I'm just going to back, back because I have to move the um, board. We've also uh, hired bikes when we've been on holidays. So we've seen other cities. It's a, you know, it's a really good way of getting a snapshot of a city and then returning to those places that you think need a, a longer time. Because when, you, when you're on a guided tour, you don't normally go into places. You'll stand outside and talk about them so you can go back. So I've done that in, in, in a couple of other uh, Spanish cities. We did it in Bangkok, which you really would not think would be appropriate for going on a, a bicycle at all. But it was an evening uh, cycle tour, perfectly uh, hosted. Um, took some back streets and whatever, went around some of the uh, markets, the flower market, and went over to the, to the temples. The temples at night, no visitors. It was uh, all floodlit, fantastic. New Zealand, uh, shout out for New Zealand. I, I know there was somebody from New Zealand on the earlier call. Um, we, did, we hired bikes uh, on our trip there and also uh, in Canada uh, a couple of times. So it uh, can be a really effective way of, um, of seeing things quickly when you're limited for time. So planning a trip really depends what you want to do. Uh, if you're going around a city, then yeah, guided tour, yeah, saves so much effort and time. But if you're out of time, you do need to spend a bit more time uh, planning it. And what we've found is no one else does maps like the Ordnance Survey. It's, um, and unfortunately, Ordnance Survey really is just, uh, just mainland UK. Um, and you know, I, I, when, when we, um, I remember we went to Tenerife and I wanted to get a, a cycle and walking map of Tenerife and it was about the size of an A4 sheet of paper. <laughs> not much use for, for, for navigation. Uh, we also found this in Mallorca when uh, the earlier uh, talk is finding uh, good quality maps is, is difficult. So turn to what's available in terms of software and route planning. Komoot uh, and similar are great, but you don't believe everything they tell you. You do need to get down and look at the route and yeah it might be a bridle path but it's a bridle path that goes across a plowed field that is you know or it goes down uh, might go down some steps and stuff like that which may not be appropriate if you've got panniers and everything on that so yeah um it's um it can be um it is worthwhile just going on to google street view or aerial view etc uh, and if you're in the uk and doing it then you can obviously cross check with all so so the first uh, one I'm going to talk about is Gozo, because I've been to Malta several times. I've actually got relatives that live there, um, but I'd, I'd, I'd never been to Gozo. And, and talking to my relatives, I said, well, it, you know, go to Gozo. It's, it's like Malta was 30, 40 years ago before all the holiday, you know, and we like the holiday makers, obviously, <laughs> we thrive on tourism, but it has made Malta a very uh, crowded island. Um, so go to Gozo, and it, it, it is a... a you know, as I would imagine Malta that time ago, very much quieter on the roads, very much quieter in the places that you go and visit. Um, I stayed in um, a, a, a village to the, uh, up St. Paul's Bay uh, on the top right. Um, I mean, it's easy to get around. From, from there to Valletta by bus is probably three quarters of an hour on a bus. 
um, and, and, and uh, it made a, a lot of sense to stay there. It also meant I could get to the uh, port at the north of the Isle of Malta fairly easily also by bus, and then it was by car at the port in Gozo. Um, I hired an electric mountain bike. I'm not normally riding an electric bike, but on this occasion I had limited time uh, and I knew it could be a bit bumpy. Uh, and I say a bit bumpy, the um, graphs at the bottom <laughs> show the, uh, the profile of the, um, of the island, uh, of the route that I took. Uh, and the four bits there, I mean, the first one, I had to get up and walk. It was actually was mountain bike uh, trail. Uh, and um, it just got to a point where I did not feel comfortable um, being on the bike. The bike was really struggling uh, in terms of power. Um, and, and I walked up. I may have walked up the second one as well. Um, the trouble is with a mountain bike, uh, especially an electric one, is uh, it's actually very heavy. <laughs> uh, and uh, pushing it up uh, a sort of um, 45 degree or, or steeper uh, angle was was really quite uh, 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 strenuous. But anyway, I did 25 miles, uh, which doesn't sound like uh, a lot, but with an electric bike, uh, you get around pretty quickly. But I did spend some time sightseeing, uh, and Gozo is you know, definitely worth a day uh, if you're in Malta, uh, and, and even, I would say, spend a little bit longer there uh, for what's to see. Um, it was also, I didn't go much further than 25 miles anyway because of the ferry timings, because by the time I got there in the morning, they, they obviously got their transport planning from the British because the bus from outside my hotel gets to the ferry just uh, after the incoming ferry arrives. So what that means, it's great for the people that have arrived on the ferry, but the people that are departing on the ferry have to wait for the next ferry. So, you know, and and, and there's no way around it. You you just have to wait another half, uh, three quarters an hour, grab a coffee or whatever, uh, and, and wait for the ferry. Um, and I also wanted to be sure that I got the ferry back again. So, limiting factor there. So here's some pictures of Gozo. So, uh, you know, it's a rocky coastline, um, not much in the way of beaches. Definitely some history, uh, Roman uh, aqueduct there, uh, which um, continued uh, right into the main town. Um, and the bottom right are salt pans along the north of the island. I have no idea. I mean, they just come around the corner and woof. Uh, and there's, uh, and this goes on for quite some distance, quite quite a sight, these salt pans there. So, uh, what else? So, talking about planning with commute for, for those that don't use it, I've used it for both cycling and walking. I For, for £25, uh, I've got pretty much worldwide um, maps on this. Uh, you do need to download uh, for, for the region that you're going to, um, and then you can uh, either plan or use existing routes. And it has, uh, you know, in terms of this, uh, the, the, the website that you use, you can use it on, I mean, I have, I, when I'm cycling, I have two phones. I have a ruggedized phone, uh, I'll talk about in a minute, and then I carry my normal phone, which is there for emergencies and whatever. It doesn't have the battery to be able to run this software. You can choose what, as I say, you can choose what you want to do, cycling, and it can be, it can be uh, touring cycling, uh, mountain biking, or, or, or road racing type cycling, or you can walk or run. You set the parameters of where you want to go, um, a radius of area that you uh, want to uh, search, how much time you want to spend on this, uh, on this trip, uh, and what level of difficulty. And it'll come up with some options. And I, I, I'm going to use Stockholm here because uh, the next one uh, area I'm going to talk about, uh, based in Stockholm, it um, comes up with some options and you can choose from them. And when it, as you go through the options, it will also show the highlights of the route. So whether they be um, nice buildings, nice uh, viewpoints and stuff like that. So you can choose those. Um, and it also here, um, you can, especially if you're walking, you can choose a route that's accessible with public transport. So you can walk out and then catch a bus back or, or vice versa. So here's, here's the, um, uh, the route I actually did in Stockholm. Um, when you choose that, you get a map and a breakdown of what you're riding on and the profile of the route. So whether it be you know, a single track, whether it's paved, whether you're actually um, going on something that they don't know what it is and you need to investigate further. 
and then it gives you an idea, as I say, of the gradients along. You can zoom in on all that lot uh, and make sure it's uh, within your capabilities. And Commute, it's got a lot of users. I mean, it's a German software, uh, so there's, uh, you know, it, 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 uh, it depends on where people have been. So um, it's got um, a lot of cyclists, but also a lot of walking. We found loads of routes in Tenerife. It was great, you know, uh, because as I said, when I when I got a started looking for a map. And bought a map, it turned out to be an A4, one of the whole island for Tenerife, which is next to useless. As I said, it's £25 for, uh, uh, for worldwide. The ruggedized phone I use, uh, which does bounce well, and we've proven that, um, and it's also waterproof, costs about £100. I use a free SIM from Asda, um, and that gives, that's it. I have no running costs um, because I'm not using it as a phone. It will serve as an emergency phone if I need to but it has um, at least eight hours battery life, um, you know, which is perfectly adequate for most rides. And of course, it's got, it hasn't got, um, sorry, it's got a mini USB port. Uh, you can charge it up uh, uh, en route or if you've got a battery pack as well. So very useful. Others, others are available. Sorry, I can see the chat line. Lab. So let's just see if we can put, when we're pulling the, okay. And he's right about trusting Camus wrapping on. It's mostly good when I'm experimenting through wood into a vineyard. It knew you wanted to go into a vineyard, Mike. Um, <laughs> yeah, and and uh, yeah, it's mostly chatting about um, about Camus on the chats. Never really heard about Gozo. Yeah, it's great. Uh, went to Malta on a business trip. About, yeah, couldn't be the difference in tourism that time. Good time, just like the British. Yeah. Okay, right. Let's move on. So, st oh, go back. Trouble is, if I open the chat, I can't see half the screen. Stockholm, Bike Eye is in central Stockholm. Um, trouble is, uh, Stockholm has the equivalent of their Boris bikes, so there's not a lot of hire bikes for people who want to go out of the city. Um, and unfortunately, the one that I chose, which was the one closest to the hotel, really only had city bikes available uh, with baskets on the front. Now, I was doing the best part of 55 mile ride, but thankfully, um, it was pretty flat. Uh, if it had been uh, that type of bike when I hired in, um, in Oslo, I would have not been a happy bunny. Uh, the Oslo trip was uh, distinctly more hilly. Um, but yes, you can get to, uh, I had a fantastic day. The, the weather was great. Otherwise, I wouldn't necessarily have gone on the bike. You go to the, uh, the Queen's Palace, uh, and I'm not going to try to attempt the Swedish pronunciation there. Um, and then out in the countryside, Swedes have castles as well. Uh, they're also very keen on cycling in this area. So uh, I had lunch at a cycle cafe, a lovely uh, seafood salad there. It was great uh, and got back in plenty of time. Stockholm itself, very easy city to uh, cycle around, uh, much like what you would imagine Holland to be like in terms of cycle paths and, uh, and cycle lanes, um, very easy. Slide. It is. This is a little bit different. This uh, Leslie and I uh, went on that. Uh, both of us have been. I, I had business in Gibraltar, uh, and um, both Leslie and I have been uh, separately to Gibraltar. Uh, you don't really need a lot of time there. Um, we didn't really, you know, thought we were looking around for what else uh, there would be to do. Uh, and for a number of years, we've been trying to get to Cadiz, uh, and. It, it's, it's one of those places that the nearest airport is Jerez. Um, Ryanair only f doesn't fly there all year round. Uh, and when we wanted to go, Ryanair wasn't flying there. So um, we, we've not managed to get there. But um, when I was looking for what alternative uh, venues there were near Gibraltar, I realized it was only an hour, one and a half hours drive from um, to Cadiz. Uh, and the routes that we took are on the right hand side there. Uh, sorry, we, we flew to Gibraltar. Uh, and then basically you just walk over a uh, 10 minute walk from the airport through the border control and you're in Spain uh, and hired the car. I'd already booked it, hired the car in Spain. So you don't have any faffing about with, you know, hiring the car in Gibraltar and taking it through the border and all that. You just, you just walk. Um, and then an hour and a half drive. And it was through, as you can see, the Parc Naturel. Uh, which was gorgeous uh, views um, going to, uh, on the drive up there. Really enjoyed that. 
uh, and we arrived in um, in Cadiz in time to uh, we had a, a hotel right in the centre, so we found the parking spot uh, underground garage, uh, parked the car up, walked ten minutes to the hotel, uh, and we were there. We were, you know, quick refresh, uh, change, and out for dinner. And um, then we had the um, uh, pretty much the whole of the day the next day, um, but obviously had to get the hire car back to um, to uh, the Spanish uh, hire car place near Gibraltar uh, in good time. So we knew we were again we were on uh, on limited time. So well before I leave this slide, the, the the bottom route on the right is the route we took back. Uh, which initially wasn't that interesting, but as you get down to the bottom, uh, where it says Park Natural de, de la Estreta, um, sorry for any, anybody who speaks Spanish, uh, uh, that was murdered that. Um, but what you don't realise is, yes, you know Gibraltar is near, uh, and the you know, Pillar of Hercules and all that sort of stuff, but it's just like looking across a river at the North African coast at that point. You were, you're just across the, you know, you, you almost feel like you can reach out and touch Tangier, it's um it's so close there, quite spectacular viewpoints from that uh, southern Spanish coast there. So in, in Cadiz we took a guided tour, uh, a company called Badger Bikes. Uh, you know, it was so good, I'm I'm quite happy to post them on here. Uh three hours was twenty-five dollars each. We did about eleven miles of cycling. Um, and quite clearly, you know, uh, that bit at the bottom, that long loop, if you were staying in Cadiz, you you know, we wouldn't have been able to get down to that bottom bit. Uh, and we, you know, having only uh, what was essentially um, eight hours uh, uh, to do the tour uh, uh, in Cadiz, um, we, the, the uh, Gadi tour was definitely the best option. It was all flat, uh, which was great, of course. Um, and the real bonus for us was we hadn't asked for a, a private tour, but it ended up being a private tour. We were definitely going out of season. Uh, it was. Um, Maybe it was January or early February uh, this year we went, uh, so you know uh, Cadiz was quite quiet, um, and we had our own personal tour uh, with with a guide who I think it was his uh, first or second tour that he'd done, but he was brilliant, uh, and we got to see uh, uh, pretty much all, all that we would want to see of Cadiz without going in many places. Uh, Cadiz is a lovely city. Uh, the bottom picture on the bottom right is the bit that is uh, right at the bottom of, of the of the map. It's the bridge that crosses over at the bottom. Uh, the, there isn't much else to see down at that bottom end, uh, except um, on the uh, coast side, it is all beaches. So we stopped off on the way back on the bike there for a coffee and a, and a, a, I can't remember the cake, probably was a cake involved <laughs> uh, coming back up. But you know, we, we in three hours we got the complete sort of tour of Cadiz, and then in the afternoon after we'd returned the the bikes, uh, we had lunch, and then we um, went and visited some of the sites. We, certainly, I would go back uh, to Cadiz again. I would like to spend another day there. There's a couple of bits that we didn't get to to see, uh, uh, and just explore it more on foot. One thing you don't realise when. Uh, it is, is it is called in by uh, the cruise ships and it, it's almost like the cruise ships come right into the center you walk out from where this um, the central picture uh, which is the town hall that town hall looks at the the cruise ship dock uh, and and a cruise ship had appeared um, uh, overnight uh, uh, and um, we'd gone out for a walk the evening before uh, and then all of a sudden this cruise ship had appeared and so it seemed to be dominating that town hall square uh, but thankfully um uh, the, the, the Cadiz is big enough that those um cruise ship um inhabitants if you like uh weren't noticeable in terms of uh, crowding places out so um i think this was a, a slightly shorter talk um in terms of summary what i think you need to be clear about what you want to do and see uh and then um if it's a city, a guided tour is, is, is probably going to be uh, a, a good option. We did do quite a bit of work both in uh, together when we went to Cadiz, but also when I've done them in Copenhagen, etc. Looking at TripAdvisor reviews, um, because in some of the bigger cities there are there are quite a few choices of what you can go with. If you're going out of season, make sure you check which days and the times they're operating. 
um, you know, that, that, that sounds obvious, but, uh, you know, you can get a nice day in, 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 in spring um, and think, uh, great, but because of, uh, there the won't be running uh, two trips, uh, two tours in a day because of the daylight hours uh, that are possible. If you're hiring a bike, definitely check the return bike time. Uh, otherwise, you'll be paying for 24 hours, not, uh, not just the, uh, the, the day. You need to check out what happens if you suffer a mechanical. And you may end up with, uh, you know, a, a spare inner tube, etc. But if it's something more serious, what are they going to do? Uh, are they going to come out and, and pick you up or bring you a, a, a new bike or something? Uh, you do need to do that. And obviously, uh, what I've said earlier in terms of commute, etc., is checking the route, making sure that um, uh, you, you know what you're going over uh, and that there are appropriate places to see and, and cafes to stop at. Well, I think that's... As I say, that's all, folks. Um, great, Andy. Thank you very much indeed. Any questions? One or two questions, perhaps from the floor. Just looking at what's going Hi, on. Andy. When you went to Hello. Copenhagen, I'm assuming that's quite an expensive uh, place to to visit. Um, yeah, I mean, it's um, it depends. <laughs> um, the um, I mean, obviously, it's got it's got all the um, normal. It, it's capital city, so you're going to end up paying capital city rates for anything. Um, of the Scandinavian countries, it's probably the cheapest of the Scandinavian countries. You know, Norway is eye watering, uh, particularly if you want anything alcoholic. Um, Iceland is even worse, <laughs> um, but Copenhagen, I suppose, because it's got a land border, um, you know. The uh, last time I was in uh, Denmark was actually just before lockdown. Sorry, excuse me. <coughs> and I went to the north of um, Copenhagen up to Helsingor, uh, famous from Shakespeare. Uh, and the, uh, it, it, it has signs up welcoming Swedes because they come over on the ferry to buy cheap alcohol. <laughs> cheap compared to Sweden, that is. Uh, so, yeah, um, Copenhagen, I... Uh, yeah. I suppose it's, it's, it's like saying London's expensive. London's expensive if you forget about the ways of getting into the centre. You don't need to stay in the centre of, of London. Uh, and, and it seems, feels a bit strange talking about tubes, etc. When a, when, a, when a tube is probably the last form of transport I want to go on at the moment. But you can be, you know, you, you can stay in London um, a reasonable distance out, get good priced accommodation and still be you know back in the center in in 20 minutes you know it's it, you know using the tubes or, or the buses so uh, the same in Copenhagen is just a uh, prudent choice of accommodation makes it uh, you know, can make it less expensive and it's got an excellent public net, uh, transport network uh, or, or you use a bike <laughs> yeah to see some uh, say some familiar faces uh, haven't seen yeah. Them, uh, so, yeah, yeah. Right. excellent okay thanks very much all Okay. Thanks, Andy. Thank you. Cheerio. Thank you. Cheers, Thank you. Right. Cheers, Andy.